People ask a lot about where the show is coming from in terms of how these people, what they're like morally. Are they, are they moral people? What about spies in general? How do spies exist in a world in which they have to do all these terrible things? Are they good people? Are they bad people? There are no real bad or good guys. I, I think everyone is so complicated and there's so much gray and it's just what you're willing to kind of give up. There are moral compromises, there are personal compromises, all in the name of serving a higher cause. We might be able to look at morality through the fundamental question, do our acts alleviate or increase suffering? For Philip and Elizabeth Jennings, although they know that their acts create some suffering on a small scale, they believe that on the larger scale, they're reducing suffering. If you can see it through their point of view, they're in pursuit of, of sort of a noble cause. It's a show that asks us to give a human face to people we might consider our enemies, to understand the underlying humanity and complexity and, and uh, conflicts of people on both sides of any particular divide. This is war. You think they would have done anything less to us? Reagan... I don't need the speech. I know it's war. This is easier for you. You think it's easy for me, what I do? Traditionally, it would be that the Russians would be the villains and the FBI agents would be the heroes. We don't think about good guys and bad guys. We think that everybody's just a complex character in a, in a complex world, which we think is very realistic. We think that's what the world is like. And I think part of what the show tries to do is explore all sides of the characters who are trying their best to be their versions of the best people they think they can be given the very tough circumstances they're in. The whole conceit that, you know, <laughs> this suburban couple, that they're really these KGB spies, you know, killing people on the side. It's complex and it's so layered and I, I think that's the fun of the show. The greatest step they took was giving them incredibly human flaws. You see a marriage struggling, you see people struggling with everyday <laughs> problems as well as incredibly heightened problems. But ultimately, you, if you make them human, then you should be able to let an audience follow them. People are flawed. People have weaknesses. Everyone has weaknesses, and I think that's what this show plays on really well. It's OK. I don't think Philip Jennings is a cold-blooded killer. I think he has to be violent and, and do terrible things, but is, is conflicted about that and, and wants to at least not do more of it than he has to. He's a guy who's struggling over the course of this season with all the killing he has to do, trying to fight it, trying not to do it, and being impacted by it in a way that a cold-blooded killer would not be. The loss of innocent life during those missions as I've been told, you know, people find very difficult and to accept, and as does he. As his relationship with Elizabeth develops and real uh, feelings come in, the honey trapping she has to do for information, sleeping with people for information, he finds incredibly hard to deal with. And I just think these are morals or feelings, characteristics, call them what you will, that I think a populace would relate to and understand. How's it going with Brad? Fine. Oh, Jesus Christ. Piece of cake. Elizabeth has come here, and she has remained true to the cause. Well, if we were looking at these, these were CIA officers in Moscow, we'd say that the one who's wavering more, that we're not so happy about that, but the one who's staying true despite all the temptations or things that might make them waver, well, that's so admirable that they're staying true to the cause no matter what. I think Elizabeth believes wholeheartedly in what she's doing, and I think Anything other than 100%, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I, I think anything else that gets in the way of that is not true. And she's just a very true person. I think she's willing to make sacrifices, including um, uh, being involved in honey traps. She sleeps with men in order to perform her duties as a spy. In her mind, there is very little gray. 
you know, she, what's right is right, and that's what you're supposed to be doing. You give it your all. She's protecting millions of people. She's fighting a great battle for humanity, so it's easier to, to kill people and do things you have to do in defense of that. This job takes its toll, you know? There's a lot I can't share with her. I wouldn't want to put her through that anyway. Separate lives. I thought moving here to this post would help, but it's actually gotten worse. He's the character that should be most readily identifiable to an American audience, yet he's probably one of the most complex characters because he falls in love with the Soviet spy. In a way, it is a beautiful thing for somebody like that to have their heart opening up, except he's married and he's running this person as a spy, so it's not great. Stan's weakest character trait, I feel, is actually outside of his job. It's, it's in his relationship, in his affair, in his betrayal of his wife. That's, that's not really justifiable morally. And he does this ostensibly for, for something pure, which is his love for this woman. But at the same time, he's betraying his very core and his belief system. With all of the infidelities it, for all of these characters, Stan's great transgression is the lie and the hiding. It's the very thing that gets spies in the end. Lying will not be tolerated. What do you mean? They happen to be raising children within a system that is diametrically opposed to their core belief system. And by virtue of the fact that they're spies, they can't share their true belief system with their children. How can you be a parent when you're hiding so much of yourself from your child? How can you truly instill values when those values have to be secret? I don't think it is possible to be an excellent spy and a good parent, as this season proves. One has to give way to the other, and usually when you concentrate on one, the other suffers. One of the harder acting challenges is landing in a very real place. Someone who goes from sort of killing someone to making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for their child. Matthew Reese and I talk about that a lot because there are so many dynamics in a scene. Sometimes we say, what are we gonna play? Are we playing the guy we're about to go kill and the mission? Or are we playing that we're worried about the, the teenager who's doing like, which one is, we're juggling so many balls. One of the things we discovered in our research was an incredible paper by a psychiatrist who said that the most corrosive thing that can happen to a human being is being lied to over an extended period of time. Because what happens is you can no longer trust your own memories. You can no longer trust your own place in or perception of the world. And we think a lot about what that must be for Philip and Elizabeth's children. Paige, you started lying to us? I didn't lie. Well, you certainly don't seem to know the difference. Do you? The thing that's interesting about morals for me is looking at every character and thinking how they define themselves and how they think about themselves and what their reasons are for doing what they do. Part of what they're left with in the finale of this season is a stark look at the moral, psychological, and practical implications of their actions and the consequences of their actions on their family and on the people they love. <laughs>